So the pre-production for Gauntlet was pretty interesting because I had a bunch of big ideas and basically, what is it, G? <laughs> big ideas, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna have to cut to the, when I say big ideas, do a, a record break and then show the ballerina and then come out of it. I had a lot of big ideas. <laughs> Dream Supply. So going through pre-production and coming up with the treatment for Gauntlet, I had a lot of interesting ideas that were way out there. I really wasn't sure um, if I was gonna get the band's uh, buy-in on them, but I figured, hey, I'm gonna run it by them and see what they say. Um, and fortunately, they, they somehow, someway agreed with my, my treatment, which ultimately ended up being a dark circus type theme that we shot in a sex dungeon. You ready? Oh man. Dude, we're fucking ready. <laughs> you don't have to fucking worry about it. So we had a lot of, uh, as far as crew goes, we actually had a pretty big team um, for this shoot because we were, on a very limited and smaller crunch time of a window. I think we had maybe like nine hours-ish um, and they had an event coming into the venue right behind us so we really had to be packed up and out. But we had uh, we had a couple interns, we had G, we had Ben Beeler as a uh, director of photography, Curtis was in as a producer, Ashley as first AD. Um, and then we had a bunch of BTS and you know, on these kind of shoots or like anything else, we everybody wears multiple hats. So it was the key of being organized and moving from room to room and having stuff already set up so we could shoot. So Curtis, how do you feel? I feel like this shoot's gonna be awesome. So uh, a as the director and editor of the project, the, the biggest thing that you hate is wasting footage or leaving footage on the cutting room floor. So if you took the time on set to shoot it, even if it only has or lives for a couple seconds in the edit, you at least want to use a little bit of everything that you shot that day. Um, the great thing about the location is we had a lot of different looks that we were able to pull out of it using multiple rooms, multiple, uh, I mean, there was a lot of rooms. There's probably seven or eight rooms and we only utilized maybe four of them because we were able to get a lot more than four looks out of those rooms. And strange enough, we kind of just identified rooms with particular performers that we saw during the master wide shot, which is what we started with. And then we kind of just aligned the, the performer up with the feel and the vibe of the room. It was kind of like, it kind of made the decision for us when, when we got to that process of who was going to be in what room. Four plus the main Let's one. see if that... I can't really read on it. I know they have like a legend on the side and everything. I thought it was... It. When I first looked at it, I thought it was four. So you got the main dungeon, then you have... We can shoot through the chains too. Mm-hmm. Have somebody on the other side, like the singer performing and stuff and shooting through the chains as well. So one of the big things that we did with this video, um, which is, I don't know how common or uncommon of a tact it is, but we um, shot this at a very high shutter speed. I want to say it was like around 400, um, which allows us or reduces a lot of the motion blur that you would normally see like in a more cinematic or film experience. Uh, typically 50 to 60 frames is what our eye normally sees um, or resonates as what real motion looks like when we watch it on the screen. But with all the very uh, fast motion, high action stuff, I felt like going to the higher shutter speed where we could at any one time stop on a frame and it would be completely in focus and clear with no blur um, was gonna give it like a, a certain feel and vibe to it. So um, that was one of the biggest choices. Um, we also wanted to do, uh, give it this neon light feel so we weren't doing any like really harsh uh, key lights. We really tried to use like uh, accent off the quasar light tubes that we were using that kind of lit and gave the the feel and the vibe and then obviously adding in a a lot of atmosphere with with overhanging fog and stuff like that just to kind of give you this dark and eerie but still vivid 
where the neon came into place, it was still a very vivid look. And we've tried to keep that theme throughout all the different rooms, whether it's just changing the color or the way um, it was presented in each room. I wanted them dancing chicks. You know, the lead singer upside down and I wanted to do a verse. This girl has a hole in her house. I have a feeling I know what she does for a living. That's not her house. What is going on? Dude, she just jumped from a pole in her house to a business suit in the car, bro. Bro, she was going to another She's audition. She's trying to show you how versatile <laughs> Well, she did it. What did you say in the description for them to do? Because from what I see, everybody's stripping. Do you ever hate yourself for making a swipe plug? Oh fuck, what is this? Yes, I do hate myself for making a swipe club. So, the interesting thing, like when, when reaching out to, uh, to the performers, you basically kind of get like this list of entertainers that they have. The Snake Charmer happened to be one of them, and I was like, oh yeah, that would be, that would be dope. I think, let's add, basically it was like a checklist and you just added like from a menu, you just started adding all the acts that you wanted to participate. How do we utilize this? I'm trying to figure out like, does the snake need to be something solo, not with the other act? Combo is yellow. That's a nice color for that room for it to be in there. That's why I was very curious as to the color of the snake. Because I think that dynamic would be interesting, having the snake inside of the room that's also a color. And there's a cage in there, which can also be interesting. And the crazy thing about it was that when we got there to the location, we had only seen pictures up till that point because I was unable to go and do like an actual location scout to check it out. So like when we got there, uh, it was completely different than how it looked in pictures as far as like setup. And we had to completely start over from square one with how we were gonna stage everything. So that was a huge, that was definitely a huge curveball. Um, but fortunately when you have seven circus performers and five band members, you can kind of make anything interesting. So a big part of the video, we had obviously the band members, which is five of them. And then we had, I believe I want to say it was seven um, circus performers that had a wide variety of skill sets. But as far as the band goes, we definitely like to find a way to solo out each band member and give them their opportunity to perform. So we kind of created our own particular setup for each person. Like we had Adam, we had the, the spider web behind him, and then we created like a makeshift stage for our uh, bass and guitar players. Um, and then we also had the solo scene for Chris, the lead singer, we gave him one with the leading lady and then one where it was just solo with him. Cause we really wanted to give everyone their own time to shine. Thanks for checking out this episode of Dream Supply. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep the dream over everything.